This is episode 285 of the Andrew Hines Real Estate Investing Podcast. Welcome back to the show. Today, I have my friend, business partner, Matt Pichet on for like the fifth time. Uh, first time that he's ever come on, uh, also being my business partner. So we talk about our Florida flipping business, what we're doing. We talk about the market, the mindset it needs you need to have to be successful. Matt's done with Canada, got rid of his real estate license, did all that stuff um, because he put his money where his mouth is. And uh, we're having fun doing what we're doing. So this is a bit of a catch up, a mastermind of the business we're doing. And uh, also a bit of a, you know, kind of gold nuggets of what Matt would do differently and what he's what he's focusing on uh, as a U.S. growth strategy. Obviously, we're doing most of that together, but we're, you know, we're thinking outside the box here and what we're doing as well. Uh, so I think you're going to get something out of this one. And I know that there's a bunch of people that have been waiting for this one to kind of hear us talk about what we're doing because uh, a lot of people chatter about it because I kind of hear it in our networks. Oh, yeah, a lot of people are talking about what, what you're doing <laughs> with Matt there. So. Uh, that's great because Matt makes a lot of noise on, uh, <laughs> on his uh, social media channels, so uh, which I appreciate. Yeah. So, all right. So, uh, just before you jump in, if you want to be crunching numbers with us and, and understanding deals, uh, be sure to download, download my cash flow analyzer spreadsheet off my website, andrewhyphenhines.com, and show the channel some love just so we can keep this podcast growing uh, as everybody gets back into the uh, real estate buzz. I'm hoping yeah. with these rate, de- rate decreases. Um, all right. So without further ado, let's jump into the episode with Matt Pichet. Hello and welcome to the Andrew Hines Real Estate Investing Podcast. I got Matt Pichet back for, I think, round five, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we do like a yearly check-in. Yeah. Um, obviously, Matt and I have started working together since uh, the last podcast episode. So we're doing some yeah. projects together. We're going to talk about that today. But Matt, thanks for driving over. Yeah, thanks for having me here today as a partner rather than just yeah. a friend checkup. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Um, so... What did we talk about last time? I don't know. Like you were kind of pivoting last time. It was yeah. about a year ago. It was kind of pivoting kind of into this direction of uh, wanting to go U.S. Want to go to U.S. Flipped in the U.S. somehow. Get some Airbnbs in the U.S. So, yeah. you know, it was a normal flow to the U.S. <laughs> yeah, flow, flow to the U.S. I mean, so because before, I mean, it was probably like two years ago you were on talking about, I remember this is like during like the lockdowns and yeah, stuff. Yeah. You were just shifting into private lending. And yes. that, so you'd sold off the houses. Mm-hmm. And uh, give the backstory because not everybody's going to be familiar with you. So why don't yeah. we just do like high level backstory, high level, yeah. how you got into it? Because you, you do the spiel all the time. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So right after high school, started my apprenticeship as a carpenter. Uh, got in as a carpenter to that. Uh, as soon as I, as I got my ticket, I became um, like working for investors with my own renovation company. So I was doing all these jobs for other investors. And then they all said the same thing. Like, Matt, I wish you were a realtor. My yeah. realtors don't know anything about cash flow, renovations. You know all about budgeting yeah. and stuff like that. You should be a realtor. And I was like, okay, well, I don't want to be a carpenter forever. That's for, that's for sure. So I thought it'd be a nice transition to me being a full-time investor. So I became a realtor specializing yeah. with investors. Uh, bought my own stuff. And I was doing videos to grow my uh, investor client base. And what ended up happening is I, get it, I was getting a lot of partners. Who so were you on. were doing your work on your own stuff. Yeah. So as a carpenter, you kind of just switched to doing your own projects. Yeah, I do my own projects, doing for other people. Like while you're a realtor, you're while also I was renovating. a realtor, yeah, I was like one foot in, one foot out. And yeah. then what ended up happening from all the YouTube videos that were strictly made to get realtor clients, so I could stop swinging a hammer every day, is yeah. people were like, were just like, how about I just partner with you? Like, how about instead of just being your client, I partner with you. I was like, oh, okay, I'm not going to say no to that. So I got one partner, two partners, 10, 20, 40, 50. So you, and you very much like having worked with you, like I know you don't need every detail to just yeah. fucking go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I need like 85, 90% of it yeah, to like yeah. make sense, line up. And it's like, all right, let's go. So <laughs> fire, what do they say? Fire, ready, aim. Like Exactly. Yeah. Ready, fire, aim. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, so with that stuff, like it's not like you had every detail and every contract no. perfect, right? Like your first JV contracts probably were terrible. Yeah, they're terrible. <laughs> like they're just... Well, they're still kind of easy. Like it's like our offers for our U.S. stuff. They're just like two pages. It's so simple. Yeah. That's just the way I am. I like shit super simple. I don't like to get into a weeds and stacks of well, papers. Well, why do it? There's a there's a lot of reasons. Not yeah. To. There's a lot of reason too. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, we've we've obviously dealt with the uh, yes <laughs> attorneys down there that are not fun. You yeah. Know, your offer is a joke. Whatever. But yeah. I mean, sure. It's 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 a joke if we're going up against somebody litigious sure. that wants to cause problems. Yes. Not if we're just going up for a friendly transaction. Yeah. And like my business yeah. strategy for like all the JVs was mostly handshake. It's yeah. like, you know, we can just be yeah. friends about it and be like civil. We don't have to have pages and pages of yeah. what if this happens and what if that so happens. It's just a real like, simple agreement. Just real simple, like two pages and everybody was like, yeah, dude, I'm down for it. So interesting. We just and then you just keep the communications yeah. good. Yeah. 
But you were back then, you were like a five-year hold on those, right? Yeah, those are all five-year holds, nice and boring, nice and simple, duplex yeah. conversions, mostly single family. So just easy peasy stuff. So nothing to get too crazy about. You know, it's not a 32 unit building. Yeah. It's just a single family home. But you were so. doing like, in a given year back then, what, how many renovations in a year? So renovations like flips and stuff, we would do about anywhere between 15 to 20 flips it was like our best years. Including like, the ones you were keeping? So would you? Oh, plus those, plus keeping. So yeah, probably about 25 deals in total. Majority of them were flips and like near the most recent times. So like 2018 is when I really got into flipping yeah. more so as like a full strategy rather than just picking up, you know, 10 deals a year as a single family hold. Yeah. That's why I started flipping. It was like 2018, 2017. And yeah. we were doing about 15 to 20 flips a year from like 2018 to like 2022. Yeah. Those are like the best times for Canada. That, what that I was, was doing. You were the flyer guy. Cause I, I yeah. talked to you right around when you were starting that. It was 2019. You were, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were sending out the, the handwritten letters, yes. which became very popular Yeah, and everybody did them. Yes. And, uh, your numbers, you probably went from being able to get stuff super cheap, mm -hmm. you know, spend a few thousand dollars to spending exactly like thirty thousand dollars to get a deal. Yep. We used to spend, yeah, like five thousand bucks a month on Facebook ads and flyers and get tons of deals. And then at the most recent point, 2022, 2021, I was spending thirty thousand dollars a month. Then we'd be fucking lucky to get one deal. One deal. Lucky to get one near the end. It was like this is dumb. And if your average deal is making fifty, you're not even covering your market. Doesn't make expense. any sense. Yeah, but how you pay all the work into it? Exactly. The, the risk, the paying the project manager, you know, whatever. Yeah, if, makes yeah. no sense. And then, but like you get the odd deal in Canada that makes a hundred grand, hundred fifty grand. Yeah, a, a smoker deal and that you did pay thirty grand for. It's like that. That made sense. Like yeah. it made sense. Like the numbers made sense. I had a you know a good income, good business, but. Compared to what we're doing now, not even close. <laughs> yeah, and we're, we'll get into yeah, we'll get into that. Yeah. Um, it's just yeah, like I've I've watched what you've done, and like it's just impressive to not overthink the stuff. Just go, go. Yeah. Like, and you break stuff, but you yeah. you get things going. You and Rachel have always done a really nice job of like the design of places. Yeah. Like, I think Rachel kind of lean on Rachel for that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and she's into it, so that's, yeah, yeah. That's that's huge. That yeah. She she wants to do that stuff or is willing to for do that sure. stuff. So if we do stuff in the in Florida, yeah, we got the templates, dude. We got it all. We got the <laughs> furniture. We got everything. Just on, you know, a PDF yeah. document. It's easy. Like basically to buy the same same units. Yeah, in the all States. the color schemes, the wall colors, the flooring colors. Yeah. Like we got the whole system. And that's what you need, right? Yeah. Like, and somebody who's done so many renovations, you know, you gotta have it. Otherwise, you just keep repeating yeah. yourself. Exactly. So it's like an order sheet that everybody just refers to. If a contractor asks you, "Did you look at the document?" Is that's exactly it. Yeah. 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 We just send them a document, and then yeah. after they do two or three jobs for us, they know exactly what every house is gonna look like. Oh, he's gonna use this fucking color on the wall. He's gonna use this. So it's yeah. nice and easy. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it, I still go back to like what you did there. Like even when you were doing the houses originally, it was always, were you always trying to get it at 70 cents or were you buying on the yeah. market? So we're always, so our Canada formula was after repair value times 80% minus renovation. Yeah. So we can, uh, because prices are so high in Canada and the likelihood of you getting a smoking deal is not as likely at the same time, you know, we, we can go to 80%. So basically it's like, yeah, you're buying at 70 cents on the dollar when it comes to when you factor in renovations and stuff. Yeah. So 70, 75 cents. And you, you get away with that in Canada because you're buying an $800,000 yeah. asset. So, so the spreads are way bigger. For right? example, so a house that you believe would be worth a million when you're done. Yeah. We would buy it at 550, 600, 620. We would buy and then it. And you're putting in how much in renovations? 120, 150. Yeah. yeah. So you're en you're ending up all in around seven fifty or something. Yeah, exactly. Like seven fifty, seven fifty, eight hundred. And that's what you're saying. And... Seven, seven, seventy five cents on the dollar. That's where yeah, you're coming from. Pretty with close. That. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, those are just so the big numbers. Like, I I know like we both kind of like the getting into smaller yeah. deals, being able to hit singles, not needing to that's go all, for those it, super high leverage. Yeah. You know, it's it's way better to just do a bunch of small deals yeah. in a way. In a way, for like sure. as long as they still meet the metric. Exactly. But um, small deals are nice. They're you know they're simple. They're boring. Yeah. And just less fear. Because, like, dude, the yeah. last two years have been insane. Everybody's felt it. Every investor who's doing something of substance, like doing yeah. lots of deals, it's been a terrible two years. Of yeah, just like, been, like just the gloom yeah. around it. Even yeah. hosting this podcast and seeing, like, I've had people who used to come on who I'm like, hey, you should come back on. Let's see what's up. He's mm -hmm. like, um, nah, like, let, let me wait till I got something going Yeah, I'm not on. really doing anything <laughs> right now. Yeah, everybody's just chilling <laughs> or getting their asses kicked and they don't yeah. want to do nothing, right? So, and like, that's been, past two years, I've been liquidating the flips. Like, luckily, we're we're buying them under market value. So like yeah. a lot of the deals I, I broke even, I, I made 30 K I lost 30, 30 K. I'm proud to say that for the whole recession, I came out net neutral basically. So the past two net years neutral. have been useless for me. <laughs> yeah. So they weren't but helpful, good. but they didn't hurt. <laughs> yeah. For like the majority of investors that are yeah. doing lots of stuff, that's a good scenario. Lots of people are bankrupt or near bankruptcy and that's not good. Yeah. And like, that's one of the things like when we were starting to talk about what we're doing now is like, 
we both wanted to get back to winning. Yes. We we're talking about that this uh, weekend. Yeah, like, yeah, just yeah. Where, where are all the winning scenarios? Like, why is everybody yeah. just trying to not hurt anymore? Like, yeah. where's the winning? And I, I think it's just bullshit. And I know you posted stories about this yeah. yesterday, like that people just become a victim of their circumstance. Yeah. You know, and they just the, break the down. market changes yeah. and then they're like, oh, it's hard now. You know, well, yeah. I'm not participating in that. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to take a different approach here. And that's why, like, I know you say, like, because your perspective is very interesting to me on the U.S. stuff, because we're buying, for anyone who doesn't have the context, we're buying land and houses, mostly land, and aiming at 50 cents on the dollar. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we go a little higher than that, depends. If we can't get it where we want it, we'll do a double close, which means we get it under contract, get permission to list it before we close, and that way we can make sure we're selling them. Yeah. But the, the big difference is abundance of leads, yes. so from what you're saying, yes. is we're like call it 45 bucks a lead yeah like that's kind of where we're at exactly whereas you were like oh like a thousand a lead <laughs> seven thousand a lead yeah like theoretically <laughs> like yeah five thousand a lead two thousand a lead yeah well, like i think per deal we're probably like i don't know yeah. i haven't worked it out yet because we're probably nearing a thousand leads in total so far yeah. uh it's crazy and how many deals have we closed that's not really a valid me metric but how many deals are likely to close say say it's one in a hundred yeah. in a worst case scenario yeah exactly then we're what 450 dollars is no am i doing that wrong 4500 dollars. yeah yeah that's crazy that's still that's feeding yeah. the numbers that well our dinkiest deals are making 15 20k like that that's yeah. our, They're still you know, paying our, our little baby deals so if they cost 4500 to make 20k i'll do that trade all day yeah. long but we're getting some in there that obviously yeah. make 100 200 300 grand some deals like it's crazy sweet spot would be sweet spot would be like fifty thousand dollar buy sell for a hundred yeah that that's totally cool i do yeah. those all day long for sure yeah and the big thing is and i and with land is we want to go we want to go more of a, a margin for ourselves because you never know what swings there might be right yeah, with exactly. houses anybody could just move in Every, everybody needs a place to live yeah where with land it's more recreational there's less of a, a need to buy it yes uh so you want to have that buffer yes there. that's where the big spread comes in the 50 percent, which you would never get in canada on anything, on anything. No, nowhere not even land here N never not even you're not buying nothing for 50 cents on the dollar i don't know if you could do the same <laughs> thing like the, you just can't get access to the information yeah you don't get Can you imagine call if list, you could just like, you could just pull a list of all ontario landowners that have owned for like 30 years plus yeah. and just call them up and say hey you doing anything with that piece of land? I'll if you had it. that, like we have yeah. access to in the U.S., yeah, maybe I could see it happening. But everything's privatized in Canada, as it should be. I, I like, I believe yeah. in that. <laughs> it's funny. it's interesting. Yeah, like it's still technically public info, but they just make it hard to get it. Yes, you just got to go to City Hall to actually yeah. figure it out. Whereas, yeah, in the states, it's we just here you go. joke about this. Yeah. Like it's like all this information is public about your home. Is it really your private it's crazy. private residence? Yeah, yeah. It, Even when we started doing this, I, I was opening up my eyes to how everything's out there i was looking up like my house in naples i was like is it easy to get access to there it is i could go <laughs> i could go find your mortgage document yeah, on it's crazy house. like it's insane <laughs> i could see your it's, signature on yeah. it online just go to my computer right now that's so insane yeah yeah Which it's, is good, it's a different world but i mean for us doing business yeah obviously better so what's your assessment so far of the u.s and just ability to do business because i know we thought yeah. that there was going to be way more competition there now, yeah, this is the thing we're no, we we're just talking about. It. Yeah. There's like not enough competition. It's so easy. It's so easy. And you would think with the population being 10 times more than Canada, that there's got to be 10 times the amount of hustlers, right? Just per capita yeah. or whatever. It doesn't work that way. I don't know what's up with America. Like we were talking before, I think Southern Ontario is a special place where like there's a lot of hustling real estate investors in Southern yeah. Ontario. They just have the drive, the, the power, the yeah. motive to make it happen. That you barely find that people in the are US. so sophisticated here. Yeah, like uh, the average level of sophistication in Ontario is huge because, it, yeah. well, especially now it needs to be. Yes. like you're not you're not doing deals unless you're sophisticated. Uh, down there, I part of it is that I think we're onto something yeah. with the way we're doing it. Yeah, uh, because even the realtors we're talking to, they're like, "What?" Like they have no idea. It's like, how do you not know what we're doing? Like a double close. Some realtors are like, "What's yeah. that?" It's like, dude. Oh no, no, none of them really. Yeah, know it's like, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. We that's th that's something that I heard about. And so, so the high end in America, I think, is way higher. Like the people who are really yes. sophisticated. Oh god, yeah. way higher. Um, like Pace Morby's got like ten thousand people in his private mastermind yeah. that all do this kind of stuff. Yeah, but it's just such a big playing field big that country, that's actually yeah. still not a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, but the ones who really understand it really know. Yeah, you're you're going to be competing against them. So where where I found that we are competing and it's annoying is the pre foreclosures. Yeah, because everybody's yes, calling them. That's the list. Is true. That's just like we, we basically just wasted a fair bit of money. Kinda. Although we have one deal that yeah. should be pretty awesome yes. out of that list. Yeah, that'll make it all worthwhile. Hundred percent. 
but it is true yeah everybody's going after the same list the easy lists maybe that's what yeah. it is but again like america yeah. just has america has you know an insane upper rich class and then an insane yeah. like poverty class and not a lot of the middle that's kind of how it yeah. is for the doers there's not many of them but the ones there's that not are many in the middle there's a lot of unsophisticated yeah. that won't be very hard to be more creative then and then there's going to be those that that elite it's few in the very top that are just killing but it's a big enough playground that yeah. you can still do like the business. money in america is crazy like even just walking around naples florida Boca Raton, like if you, like the money there is insane. Like if you think you're rich here and you you go through rich neighborhoods, like we have nice houses in Canada, obviously nice neighborhoods. Yeah. Not like the yeah. U.S. is insane. So it's the same thing for like the skill level. It's the same thing. Yeah, absolutely. So it's just been learning for both of us, which um, obviously is better to just jump in. Yeah, I did jump in with the flyers before, and that I was yeah. kind of getting murdered on the cost yeah. of uh, of it because those were coming in at it's still not that much, but for per letter like sixty cents. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you're getting the, the deals and the, the number mm. of spend I was doing. I feel like it was worse than this. Like yes. we're, we're getting active leads. It's just you have to work these more. Exactly. Because those people already said, yes, I want to sell. I agree to your price. Exactly. Yeah, that's true. They signed the offer, the letter, yeah. whatever you had. Yeah, these we got to break them down a bit. But yeah, yeah, the cost per lead and the quality of these leads are insane. I don't want anybody stealing them. <laughs> yeah. But it's so easy. Like, and America's so big. Like, there's tons of obviously tons yeah of room, you could but... go in, in any state yeah. um you know you could go and, and start cold calling people yourself like you could oh, pull this sure. and like the, yeah. the big thing is is how many people will right like that's the thing like this information is out there it's nothing yeah it's nothing new it's like all these strategies doing it and, like working hard and that's the whole thing yeah. like people just show up and do like i don't know 70 percent of effort yeah. in their job or their career they, they just barely yeah. do it like if you just do 85 percent effort like just that little bit 10 percent more that's all it takes yeah. to like really make yourself amazing and have a yeah. good, if, if you can push it to 90%, like oh, you're fine. All right. So school us on this. Cause you were posting stories yesterday about getting kicked in the head, things yeah. that have happened yeah. and how you looked at it different. Like how, what have you seen? What's the secret sauce in your life? Like, is, is, is it the effort level? Uh, certainly just taking action. I can see that yeah. as an observation. Taking action for sure. And just getting mad and just doing something about it. It's just a, it's a fight or flight response, right? Like, and I think I've heard this before. Some people, when they get faced with tragedy, they just run, right? And then just curl up in a ball and watch Netflix and eat Cheetos, right? And other people fight. No, I'm not taking this anymore. I'm, I'm going to do something about it. And that's just the way I am naturally. It's just like, yeah. yo, don't mess with me. Like, get out of my way. Like, if there's a problem, like, I'm going right through it, dude, until I can't go anymore. It's so, like, that's just how I am. So when there's a problem economically or in my business, and I'm just like, we're fixing this right now. Like, I'm not... Yeah. Uh, just sitting and waiting for the recession in the past because that's what everybody's doing. And then, you know, yeah. this fall, next spring, for sure, the real estate market's going to be a lot better than it is now in Canada. And But that's when people are going to get in. Like now, now real estate's cool in. again. It's like, dude, you missed it. A year ago is when you should have got in and yeah. started building your business and getting your formations ready and your structure. It's too late now. And what would you say, like the average person? I mean, like say it's like somebody in our real estate investing audience here. Yeah. You know, what what should they be doing in your estimation? Should they still focus attention on Canada or are you just yeah. pure now? Yeah, I'm biased now. <laughs> now, but I'm walking with my wallet, I guess, or whatever, yeah. talking with my wallet. I'm out of can completely. Shut yeah. everything down. I sold every single property. Your real estate license. Real, I just terminated, what, three days yeah. ago it was? Yeah. In Ontario. I'm no longer a realtor in Ontario. Dude, I... I am moving with my feet. That's a and my money change. So. Yeah, that's like I, a that's a burning the bridge behind you move. I shut down my construction business. You know, I had yeah. uh, almost thirteen employees. You know, full time across all the social media, the the carpenters, project manager, the funds yeah. manager, like all those guys. They all lost their job, unfortunately. So, like, I just shut everything down, and now we're in the U.S. And now we yeah. have like what, like twelve people as a team in total, between the cold callers, acquisition managers. Us. Yeah, so five cold callers. Yeah. We got. Uh, acquisition manager what we're at five adding, five adding in training more. right now yeah. so so that'll make 12 there <laughs> yeah plus the funds manager is going to come over here and yeah. whatever else your assistant yeah so. yeah we got my assistant work i mean the big thing that's starting to happen that i'm realizing is like we have so many deals yeah and this is constantly happening because we have private <laughs> chats with each acquisition manager yeah. wait what deal is this again that yeah, we're talking like, about yeah so we're we need a deal manager pretty soon pretty there soon. are those growing pains yeah uh but obviously like that's a good problem it's great yeah <laughs> it's just I was saying this in my last interview, like we're just, uh, like we don't know what we don't know with some of this yeah. stuff, like the double close thing, like because so few people around us, like no one in our network I know yeah. of has done this stuff. Yeah. So it's us having studied the strategy said that makes sense. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, 
they're just hard conversations. So. Yeah. And like just, 90% of what we're doing is similar to Canada. It's like it's the same thing, but there's a little bit of differences. You got to learn different people say different yeah. words for different things. Yeah. Right. Seller financing instead versus of VTB. VTB. There's yeah. all these little things, but like it's pretty much the same. Yeah. Uh, like earnest money deposit versus yeah. deposit. Yeah. Uh, title company versus lawyer. lawyer. Attorney versus lawyer as yeah. well. That's uh, a, yeah. I think chat GPT, what difference between an attorney and a lawyer was like a month ago. There's nothing. What's the difference? Yeah. There's nothing. They can, they, <laughs> they just don't say it here. Yeah. It's just yeah. weird. Yeah, but you'll know if that somebody do business in the states, like you'll hear it among Canadians, like uh, investor girl Brett. She was in in the book I wrote, and she's like, "Who are your attorneys? Who are your accountants?" I'm like, "Obviously, American, U.S. Yeah, investor." Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't say that otherwise. It's, no yeah. one says that in Canada. Yeah. but they'll still say they'll understand lawyer for as sure. Well. I remember when we when we started this, I created a uh, Chat GPT document of all the things that our our yeah. callers should avoid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't say this. Don't say a. Don't say hydro. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I've been ringing for that on YouTube and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's hydro? Yeah, yeah. What's hydro? That doesn't make any sense because yeah. uh, I think one of our our callers uh, said, "Oh, and I think you have hydro running across the back." It's like, wait, no, no. There's just some electrical lines. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? We got a hydroelectric yeah. water. Dam? What? No, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, but that stuff's all fun. Like, I mean, I, when I when I worked in high school, I worked at this like hotel, and I worked as a dishwasher, which is yeah. a horrible job. It was fine. It taught me some like self discipline and humility. But I saw all the servers that would just stand around and they would like chat, and they're done serving tables, so they're just sitting there talking, yeah. and I'm here like scrubbing pans and stuff. I'm like, why do they have such an easy job? And I used to like, I had the wrong attitude. I like, I kind of like begrudged them doing it. And then I'm like, wait a minute, why don't I just apply for that job? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just applied for that job and then shifted over. Yeah. Way better. Yeah. Like the grass looked greener, was greener. <laughs> I made the move and was glad I did. Yeah. And that's like a perfect example of what I think this is. I don't think like you can't make money in Canada. It's just a matter of where are you going to have to put the most effort? Yes, that's it. And, and for a, for a doer to just go out and do if you're an active investor, you're, you're going to have a harder time, in my estimation, than in the U.S. Well, this is why average. I'm so excited because, like, I am a doer. I just want deals flooding in. Like, yeah. I want to be busy and have a team doing. Like, yeah. That's what I always wanted. And we kind of had it in Canada. Like, we were doing really well for a Canadian investor. We got yeah. lots of deals, but not like this. This so is the crazy. The thing that made so. it hard is, is so many moving parts. Like, what, yeah. the second we get a house deal, it's way more work than a land deal. Oh, for sure. Like the land deals, yeah, we're we're dealing with stuff on the double close stuff, yeah. but. For the for the uh, house deals, um, you know, if we got to renovate, we yeah. get, now we got to find contracts. Well, now when we get a house deal, I'm kind of like, oh man, like, oh, but we're gonna make hundred hundred k. It's like, okay, I guess we'll do it. But <laughs> <laughs> they're still good, but I feel like uh, obviously all things equal, we'd prefer the land. Oh, deals. for sure, yeah. Um, but on the other side, like, I want to build a monstrous portfolio. Yeah. So a big part of of what I, I want to do with what we're doing is we accumulate this monstrous portfolio yeah. using creative financing, buying low, keeping it. Yeah. yeah. Buying low, uh, whatever we got to do, we can bring in partners as we need mm -hmm. and, uh, just keep them because in the yeah. long run, like structure these that it's good. We can just keep them forever. If we exactly. Want. Yeah. And then no need to sell. They, they eventually pay off, make us more money. That's all good. Yeah. So we can throw that in. Like, so as we're, we're all, we're always soliciting houses. Because as we get some of those, some of those will work as yeah, rentals for sure. And that we're still we're still refining, obviously. Yeah. But uh, there's again just so many so many freaking things we're doing all yeah. at once. Yeah. And so many things we could do, which yeah. we both said this is like no, we have to get this working before we expect yeah. anything we're doing. <laughs> yeah, because we want to do a bunch of stuff, mobile home parks, multifamily yeah. eventually. It's so like all right, yeah. soon, <laughs> one thing at a time. Yeah, yeah getting yeah. this up and running. Which, but we can see the vision where it's yeah. going. I mean, what surprises you about all this? Like about everything we've done today? Is there th things that you thought would happen that didn't, or happened differently? Honestly, we're doing way better than I thought, and faster and smoother. Even though you know we're getting some bumps on the road and stuff like that, yeah. but the speed at which we launched this, which I knew we would like, when we started it, because just our backgrounds, what we've done here. Um, I was like, yeah, like if I can just take what we did in Canada and just put it here, like it's going to do well. But it started off a little bumpy. I was like, man, it's not going as fast as we could. Like the, fr it's only been what, three and a half months we've been doing this business. So March 4th, yeah. the first cold caller. So started. it feels like, it feels like it's been like a year because we've just done so many things, hired so many people, had to let some people yeah. go, you know, people came in, in and out. So it feels yeah. like it's been a year. When I look back, dude, we've only been this for three and a half months. Uh, we yeah. got all like 21 deals under contract. 
like they're and they're damn yeah. good deals. The the most profitable looking one I think would be like a two hundred fifty thousand yeah. dollar profit. Like if we add up yeah. conservatively all of the deals that we're most likely going to close on, it's like we're pushing a million dollars of profit in our yeah. business. So like that, that might be a little optimistic. Insane. But yeah. I mean, every day that changes. You actually yeah. might have inside knowledge on me because <laughs> I haven't checked what we've signed. Yeah, today. Um, so like it's crazy what's uh, what's coming. And like yeah, we're, we're just starting. Like it's crazy. Yeah. It's only been three and a half months. So we went from zero to like this. You yeah. Know? So in your experience, when it looks like that, it, it keeps down. on going. Maybe just triple down. Tri- triple keep down. Keep on going. Yeah. The thing that stresses me out with it is, is as you know, the yeah, the leads that we don't get to. Yeah. Because yeah. there's there's so many leads because yeah. we just kept we kept feeding the top of the funnel, and then our you know say our acquisitions managers as yeah, you know it took like, a bit to get on and figure or it they're, out. Or they're they're negotiating a deal rather than calling new leads, which yeah. is a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's how we got two people in training right now we just hired i just put one in right before we did the podcast here yeah. <laughs> signed one up for training so yeah. we need more people to come in bang those phones hire more yeah. cold callers and just keep growing yeah because more, more leads than we can handle is good so like yes which it is, does annoy me I, as well that we're not getting that. to them but yeah. it's also like it's good like when i see we have 200 leads that we got to get to that we haven't gotten yet i'm like guys hurry up but I'll, I'll, at the same time that's abundance, baby. I like that. I like that. <laughs> it's abundance. It's big, big uh, checks to write uh, every yeah. month to the cold yeah, call yeah, center. Yeah. But yes, you're right. And I, I agree. But it, when you go back to like your decision to invest in the US, um, were there things you thought about the process? Like what, what did you find hard? What did you wish you knew? Um, that Like if you could go back mm-hmm. two years to when did you buy your house? Like two years ago? Like the one uh, in Florida? Yeah yeah. 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 Two years ago. Yeah. Two and a half so, years. Before you'd done anything in the U.S., like what would you tell yourself then if you could go back? The only thing really is like the corporate structure. Because um, I talked to my my Canadian accountant, like, oh, I want to buy this property with my Canadian corporation money fund. Like, how do I get the money and bring it to the U.S. without getting screwed? And, oh, yeah, do this corporation setup. And looking in hindsight, it's the wrong setup. So that yeah. house is totally the wrong setup. I was like, oh, man, but whatever. I just believe in moving forward. But it's your a corporation down there and you own it with a Canadian corporation. Yes. I don't think that that's bad. Yeah. So there's like, that's the thing. It kind of had to be the way it was. But I was like, ah, but it wasn't like the three tier structure we're doing with the LP. Like it was none yeah. of that. It's just my Canadian L- Inc. owns my LLC. That's it. There's not, nothing yeah. else. So I was like, oh, that was the wrong way to do it kind of, but who cares? Yeah. And we're, we're going through that all again, right? Because yeah. not every accountant agrees. That's the thing and, that I've and, said before many times. Yeah. You talk to three different accounts, they give you similar answers. They're all close, but they're, they're all close. different. It's like, who's right? Oh, I'm right. No, I'm right. It's like, dude, I don't know. We'll figure it out when tax time comes. Let's just, well, let's just roll. Yeah. <laughs> Which I think every business needs some of that. So yeah. I think that's where a good word compliment because yeah, I'm more 100%. on the other side. You're more on that yeah. side and we meet somewhere in the middle, exactly. which yeah. is probably where we should be meeting. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we're just negotiating that now because we set up a, a structure that may not be correct. So yeah. we've got my accountant and then the accountant that advises this company <laughs> talking yeah. to each other, hopefully. Yeah, no, uh, this is the way you do it. No, this is the way you do it. It's like, oh my God, how is there not that. a right answer? It's, but it's so yeah. like gray. Well, the simple like black and white answer that most accountants seem to be able to agree on is that you want an LP yeah. being your operating company. The LLC, they generally say, no, you're going to find most people who have invested in the US say, well, my accountant said don't. Yeah. But then it kind of came up, well, there might be a way that you can. Yeah. And Matt and I wanted to do the LLC. We wanted to have one because it, it causes less questions. Yes. Because LPs, people don't see it as often. It's still totally valid. Yeah. It's just they don't see it as much. They're like, wait, why an LP? You yeah. sure it's not an LLC? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. But the, like, the title company that works with us gets it. I've never heard the sell- a seller say a word. You yeah. know, they, they don't really care. Yeah. It's just a, a slight extra thing. For sure. Which... Yeah. I feel like we're finding with a double close, it's like we we need to discover what all the objections are. Yes. Formulate our yeah, responses. Exactly. And like in one year from now, we'll be so much better at oh, 100%. that stuff. Yeah. Which is the way everything is. Yeah. So our, our realtor is the guy that's selling most of the land for yeah. us is not having the most fun with yeah. that. <laughs> what is this? All, all the buyers are asking him, is this legit? Is this legal? You know, like, oh God. Yeah. It's and fine. He's, he, this is a, uh, you know, a guy who just sells rural land you know he's not uh he's not that kind of business guy and uh so that's been a bit of a yeah bit of a learning process for all of us we'll we'll call it so um all right so you said what you would uh you would do differently i know the structure is a big big pain i actually did it wrong when i first started too back in 2012 yeah i set up an llp because i'm like well wait i want limited liability yeah yeah yeah. no they're like no you want the limited partnership didn't 
I was an idiot back then. I didn't even get advice. I yeah. just, I talked to an investor and he's like, oh, I did this. And then I went online because you can incorporate it yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh no, I want the one with limited liability. No, you don't. <laughs> That's funny, yeah. <laughs> no, you don't. So, but I mean, fortunately, I figured it out quick. Hadn't yeah. made any money yet. Converted it. Got everything squared away. Yeah. And uh, yeah, sometimes you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. But, That's a cool thing, how easy it is to convert stuff to LLC, to LP. They just, I don't know, file paperwork, change yeah. it over. It's so easy. Well, the thing, a big takeaway I have from what we've done so far is like when you move fast, you're going to burn some money. Yes. Like you're yeah. going to have inefficiencies, which we definitely have. Yeah. And, you know, setting up the wrong structure and, you know, paying for more leads than we can get to, those are inefficiencies. Yeah. Although hopefully we can minimize them. For sure. But all things equal, I'd rather have too many leads than not yeah, enough. Yeah. It's too. always better than not enough. That's for sure. Because the is, abundance mindset, right? Yeah. So talk to me about that. Like what's, what you've seen as like, again, secret sauce, kind of like what yeah. makes what keeps your head in the right space so you can keep pushing forward? Yeah, you need, you need to fill that top funnel. It has to be pouring in constantly, consistently. That's the thing. And that's like in Canada, we keep training our, our acquisition guys because they're all from Canada. Um, so they have the mindset of a Canadian, which is like, we don't, get, we don't come across a lot of deals. When we do, I want to squeeze this stone for everything it has yeah. in it and, and then move on to the next one. Well, that's Canada. That, like, that's how it works here because we don't come across... 60 cent, 70 cent on dollar deals like ever. When we do is like you're salivating, trying to lock up the seller mm -hmm. and you're, you're kowtowing to the seller, please. And you're just begging for the deals basically. Yeah. Uh, in America, we just, we can be savages. Like yeah. we're just, no, like this is, this is our formula. This is our price. You like, do you want to do the deal or not? No, you're too low. All right, next. I got a hundred more yeah. leads waiting. So you just keep burning the list until you find the right seller. Who's, you know, like laying down. They're either motivated or they don't care. Well, about the property, yeah. they live out of state. They're like, I don't care about this they property. They don't feel like the property owns them yeah. anything. Hasn't been there in 15 yeah. years. They're so like, 100 grand for this? Sweet. And we're like, dude, it's worth 500. Sweet. So like, they just yeah. don't care. So we're just about abundance in America, which is just the way I've always wanted to do business and tried to do it in Canada, but you just can't do it. Unless you burn, I don't know, man, $100,000 a month in marketing in Canada I'm and sure you could Canada Post going. Flyers and Facebook. Yeah. Then you'll have a business. But like, I don't want to be throwing out 100 grand yeah. a month when I can just... I won't say what our budget is in the U S but it's significantly less than yeah. what I was spending in Canada and we're getting significantly more. Yeah. So. Yeah. And so to your point though, it's like a mindset thing when you see all those like leads, when you know, there's so many more people to call. Yeah. It might cause a little bit of stress. I think it more does for us than, than for the yeah. acquisition. Yeah. And they're just cool. Sure. Oh, okay, cool. I can call more. Um, but it, it, it just does that different thing for them where, they know, well, I've got a hundred more people I can call. So if you're yeah. not interested, no problem. We'll yeah. just call the next guy. Exactly. And just having that ability. And I still think, yeah, you're right. Like, cause I still do see them trying to fight for deals, yeah. negotiating a gust. Well, can we do this still yeah. now? <laughs> got to sure. get it yeah. lower than it's that. It's constant training of them too, of like, you got to move on. You got to let go. Yeah. And even myself too. Cause like when they call me for deals, oh, I'm, almost, I'm so close. It's like 58 cents on the dollar, 62 cents. And I'm like, well... And then I start getting involved with like, well, maybe we can make it work. And we, yeah. we just got to go back to, no, gotta go back to the no. metrics. This is the price. This is how we yeah. do it. We're the biggest buyer in Florida. If you don't like it next. And I actually think that we're like, in terms of the types of, of properties we're going after, I don't think anybody's soliciting more and, and offering more than yeah. us right I now. I don't think so. Cause we're getting so many deals. Like, just for the type we're doing, like in this immediate moment, I don't believe yeah. like not for these types, which is uh, crazy. These locations. Cause like I've, I yeah. always thought, well, you hear all the, yeah. all the memes or social media doom of black rocks going in and yeah. buying all of florida no they're not like i don't know i don't see them but like you would think a company like that would just be steamrolling you know and then we come in there and yeah. we spend what we're spending we're just locking up deals like crazy it's like where's black rock dude i don't know <laughs> like, you're probably still there yeah of course I mean, yeah who, who knows I, I guess the point is like it, it just allows us to have that flexibility to 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 feel like we can waste a little bit, be yeah. a little inefficient. Yeah. And that was one of the big things I liked about us working together is you have all that experience. Like, you know what it's like to spend the ridiculous numbers. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and we're still spending quite a bit yeah. here, but like the metrics should work and the conversions yeah. should work. I know we're not probably converting nearly as high as a, like, you know, one deal for every X number of leads for as sure. you did in Canada, yeah. but you were trying way harder to trying make Trying way work. harder. Yeah. yeah. And, you, and you're kowtowing. You're not doing the best deals. You're yeah. forcing yourself into a deal. Yeah that you shouldn't be doing yeah. really. Like if I, in hindsight, yeah. that's what I would say about Canada. Like I did a lot of deals I probably shouldn't have done. <clears throat> yeah. I made 30 grand, 50 grand, 70 grand on but those the market flips. probably saved you a bit. On market some saved of me a bit. And yeah. it was just like, if that was the American metric where the market yeah. is more flat, there's more of abundance of inventory. Like, you yeah. know, the market's not going to save you in the U S at yeah. all. So like you got to buy at the right price. So you can you sell it at a low price and guarantee your win. 
But if you did that shit, yeah, exactly. That's the thing, right? Yeah. And in my mind, the only way today to know 100% you're winning as an active investor is to buy it under market value. Yeah. Like, I just don't see any other way. And that was what I concluded because I was building houses in Cape Coral. One, it's slow. Yeah. And that was just incredibly frustrating. We're like a year turnaround. And yeah, there's a lot of things I learned and I can apply that. It gives me a lot of back back end knowledge. But then my margins got squeezed, yeah. costs go up, values yeah, go holding down. Costs, yeah. We got holding costs. And and I looked at my tax return. I made money for, for last year. And you know, I sold off a bunch. I took losses on certain properties yeah. just to get rid of them yep. because I decided no more building. I'm not doing this. I'm not I'm not leveraging myself up yeah. to make 30 grand on a house. Yeah. Like I in a year's time. There's got to be a better way. And then obviously I looked at you. I'm yeah. like, if Matt, if yeah. Matt knows this. <laughs> well, like that's the thing too. Like out. in Canada, like yeah. when I think back, like you, you, for the deals in Canada, you just have to do what you got to do. But like I was buying houses in Canada for, or in Kitchener, sorry, for 600 grand, uh, selling for 800 and I'd make 40 grand, 50 grand. That's, that's a, lot a lot of, of risk. leverage that's for a, lot a of tiny, risk. tiny return. That's the thing. And, but in yeah. Canada, you don't know any better because that's just, that's just how it is. Yeah. But yeah, we're buying lots for 50 grand selling them for 100 so we made 50 on a deal that cost this much rather than that's the big that thing much. right like, what are you shit. putting on the table like what's your carrying costs like if it takes longer to sell do you have more flex and and i want the answer to that question to be yes i have i have room yeah. i have i have breathing room when i used to do flips in london like we were flipping student rentals so we would do purpose built turnkey yeah so we'd buy the house around 200 to, to 230 this is back in the glory days yeah yeah put in 200 and now we got something worth six wow yeah we would cash flow investors would love it we'd sell it to like toronto dentists and whatever yeah that was great then all of a sudden now now to get the exact same inventory we're yeah. 370 okay well how much more is the end buyer going to pay? Uh, maybe a little more, yeah. but will they cash flow? Okay, now I have a less compelling sale on the back end. Yeah. And I'm risking and levering more on the front end. Yeah. And all that just made me say, uh, no. So yeah. I just kind of, I'm like, there's got to be a better way. But what I regret about that is I should have been, I should have been more proactive. I should have been looking at the US. I should have been going to new markets. Yeah. But I didn't want to. Same here. Kind of yeah, had guess, a bit yeah. of the Matt mentality. You wanted only KW, right? You didn't want to just stay close. Yeah, I want to specialize, yeah. grow my brand, grow my business. It, it yeah. worked. But, but it worked. Like, it worked. Yeah, you don't serve have me well. Hands. But like, uh, you, you also know. changed into you know flipping from just doing the buy and holds. Yeah. And so I moved with the market. Like I just yeah. did single family from like 2012 to 2016, only single family. 2016 to 2020, duplex conversions. 2020 to like recent just flips only so because i kind of moved make with the numbers the exactly, you couldn't yeah. make the numbers work and then now i'm at the point where like dude flips don't work nothing fucking works now, <laughs> now i'm getting out of here it's like yeah unless you can solicit enough people or find another way to get them that's not the direct mail or facebook yeah. which is costing so costs much so much money yeah so that's the thing with the us we got the cold calls which is like it's almost free like it's, it's such a joke <laughs> it's still not free yeah right? <laughs> almost compared to canada but, like but, it's relatively it's yeah. a lot a lot more affordable yeah. and and the the beautiful thing is like just pick your niche pick what you want like we could go after the foreclosures we can go after the expired listings yeah. we can like you could just be so precise and then if you have a wording if you have an approach with those people that others don't have like even if others are calling them we can still win yeah oh yeah. for sure because we know how to pitch it back like that that's that's the one thing we know different is that in, in kitchener in canada I was competing with so many people. So I trained my acquisition guys to say this, the right things to make the seller sign our offer. Cause there was like four other flyers on the kitchen table. Yeah. Right. So like we were never alone. We we're always competing, but I yeah. so proud to say we pretty much always beat everybody else. Yeah. Cause my guys knew what to say and we trashed the hell out of them. <laughs> One of the biggest trashing is we're not a wholesaler. We buy, we yeah. call, which is what we use. We're not yeah. a wholesaler. We actually buy it. Yeah. All, all these guys are wholesalers. They're going to do your house and illegally. Your property, yeah. They're basically doing a job of a realtor illegally, which is hilarious. I'm a realtor. It's not illegal, but those are the things we would say. Yeah. And the seller would go, oh, oh shit. And they would sign our offer. Uh, so we're saying kind of the same stuff with the US and mm -hmm. we're beating out other, as I call them, fuck boy wholesalers from <laughs> from whatever, Arkansas, <laughs> to watching free videos on YouTube. Yeah. And we're just beating them out because we're more sophisticated. We're more trained. So yeah, I think, yeah, there's, there's room to just show professionalism, yeah. right? Like we... Hey, we, we've got the money ready to close. We're not going to wholesale it. I mean, yeah. we actually, ironically, have tried to wholesale <laughs> yes. one, but that was not in our intent. Yeah. Uh, and it wasn't part of the sales pitch. Didn't even have to go there. Yeah. But uh, it's it's great to actually wholesale. Like, whole, oh, for sure. Wholesale. So for people who don't know that, that's when you close on it, but then just list it. So a yeah. quick clean out, maybe, maybe yeah. a little a two paint. day renovation. Yeah. That's it. Like, we don't want to get into anything heavy. Yeah. Right. Like, I think the biggest thing for both Matt and I is like, no one knows where the market's going in yeah. a year. Like we don't want to be in properties for, for eight months. Yeah. I want to be in a property, you know, we close, we list it within a few days. We closed on a property today? Today, yeah. 
we just closed on a property today Market's and tomorrow, we'll right? have that property listed tomorrow yeah so that's <laughs> that's the speed and you know hopefully it sells within 30 days they close it 30 days after that bing bang perfect yeah i'd like like we're doing well in my mind if we turn the pro turn the money yeah. every every three months every three so months, four yeah. times in a year if you could double your money and now we're getting 200 percent on our yeah. money yeah Why? wait no 400 <laughs> it's not even our money we're, raising we're not our necessarily partners. <laughs> gonna double our money yeah. every time because obviously there's carrying costs closing costs yeah. so even if we are at 50 cents on the dollar there's a slightly lower margin For sure yeah but that doesn't doesn't mean that like we might get surprised sometimes maybe we think we're 100 and maybe we actually sell 150 yeah like those are the things that we'll just figure out as we go yeah one of the things is like i look at it, i'm like man we've been doing this since march you say it feels like a year it has it feels like a long time we've done a lot but we just closed our first one. <laughs> yeah, officially, yeah. <laughs> like we have a whole bunch of double closes listed, yeah. but we didn't close them. So. Yeah, we didn't close those, all double closes. Yeah. So now we got four properties on the market tomorrow, right? Yeah, should got be another, four. Should be another one, Zach, got another one. So that's five. So like, and Eric, well, Eric just yeah. got that one, so then we'll have yeah. six. It's going so, fast. Hey, it's, going fast. It's, it's snowballing, uh, you know, is very, I, I, I guess we were going to hit that point of critical mass yeah. and, and then just yeah. go. But yeah, we're wearing, Matt and I uh, wear a lot of hats yes. in the business. Yeah. Like, Every day. Yeah. Describe like kind of the, the daily routine now because yeah. your life is probably way different today than totally. it was last year. It was way more chill last year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just doing private lending, finishing off my flips, but it was nice and chill, but it's great. But right now, I just answered a phone call. Can somebody call me now? I think I just answered calls from our acquisition guys all day. Matt, I got a deal. I'm so close. Seller saying this. What should I say? That's what I'm doing all day. Yeah. Telling Zach, those say this. Calls, say th though. I love those calls. Yeah. So I'm just training my guys all day mm -hmm. um that's pretty much like my main role in this i yeah. guess is trainer and, yeah uh, yeah and making a lot of noise you do that too. yeah <laughs> <laughs> yelling everybody and whatever posting youtube videos yeah. so you're doing that you're you're posting on instagram i think you also yeah. have somebody who helps you with that so that yeah that kind of gets gets that yeah so i'm filming videos every day just to grow the brand grow the awareness yeah. so we can raise more money to do our yeah. thing training our guys you're taking mm -hmm. care of all the back end the structure the yeah, I always find and... I, I end up in that position in every business, but, uh, <laughs> like the integrator of the yeah. business. Um, I deal with the realtors on the dispo yeah. side a lot. And uh, it's funny, we just end up kind of doing these different yeah. things. But that's why I think like you said before, I like, think it's a perfect partnership. It yeah. really is. So I'm yeah, happy. we offset each other like yeah. so much. Like we, it's good. we both have media brands, but we don't approach it the same yeah, way. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. But it's good because we both have that pull, the awareness and um, ultimately we're probably going to end up doing a ton of business with people in my audience as our lenders, yeah, maybe our sure, partners, yeah. you never know, right? Like yeah, that, definitely. that stuff all comes. And like, I see that in your business is huge mm -hmm. because you funded all your flips, all your partnerships. Yep. They pretty much all came from YouTube and Instagram. That's it. YouTube, Instagram, all the money I've raised. And I, from this day, it's well over $60 million I've raised for the, raised. the past, like mostly in the past seven years, five years, all that money. That's yeah. all from YouTube. People who follow me on YouTube and Instagram. It's crazy. Yeah. And no I, banks, no no institutions, just Steve and Sarah and Charles and whatever. Think of the power of that. Like yeah. you find a deal, you can actually do it. You've paired being able to raise the money with actually having good deals yeah. that can make money. Yeah. I mean, so a lot of people just have one or the other. Oh, I can get money. I have a lot of uh, lenders or I have a lot of investors, but we don't have really good quality product yes. that's compelling. Yeah. And I think that's been the challenge in Canada. Like really people is. can't make sense of the numbers, right? Like, oh, I could private land and make X or I could own and make pretty much the same. Yeah. Oh, I'll just it's private true. land or or I'll just wait it out. Like a lot yeah. of people doing that. Which is why the past two years I've just been private lending and just chilling because like I'm not risking my money to go make whatever and potentially lose it on a flip. I'm just going to collect and, yeah, you know, finish selling off my stuff. But now yeah. that we're in the US, I like... You make way more than twelve percent interest. Yeah, there's a compelling you're reason. Your money, there's you know? a compelling reason to borrow, and that's that's the big thing. Like, which I why I kind of like cooled it for quite some time is just like I didn't see the numbers penciling. I didn't see the deals yeah. penciling, and then flipping is one of the easiest ones when you know you're buying at a discount to make the numbers pencil. Yeah, I buy for X, sell for Y. Yeah, and uh, I take everything in between. Exactly, and uh, that's that's exactly where we want to be. So yeah. And when you buy at a stupid low price, you know, you're mitigating your risk to like almost a hundred percent. It's kind of, yeah. you kind of look at the deals, like what can go wrong? It's like, well, really almost nothing go wrong unless a fucking asteroid hits Florida. Like that's yeah. pretty much it. It's like, okay, well then let's do it. Like that's how we're looking at deals well, basically. Yeah. We, we've talked about the odds, right? Like what are yeah. your odds? Like a casino, you're like 50, you're like, 50%, not even, you're like 47% yeah. likely to make money, 53% yeah. likely to lose. So over the long run, you're going to lose, lose money. <laughs> a little. Yeah. 
we're looking at deals and we're saying like what 95 yeah. only 95 percent like sure yeah. i'm making money. 95 and over are, are, are we yeah. gonna make money it's like yeah we're, we're gonna make money okay let's do the deal then yeah we're you gonna know. make money now will we necessarily make as much as we want yeah. we don't know for sure exactly um uh, and we're still feeling it out right like yeah. i mean that's the part of like you just gotta start right and yeah it doesn't mean where that's where we finish. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but I like those numbers are obviously uh, better. But for the average person that wants to, again, in my audience, like you said, you're all U.S. Like you think people should should be going there. Like if you were trying to be an, a passive investor right now, yeah. what would you be doing? Would it be in the in Canada or the U.S.? Would it be private lending or owning properties? Like what would you say? If I'd be a passive investor and actually someone who owns real estate would 100 percent be in the U.S. Yeah, which again, like I'm biased at this point, but I mean, I've done a lot of deals, so I can give a lot of expertise to this biasness. But I've done it in Canada, and now we're doing it in the U.S. And it's like mm -hmm. you're not buying in the U.S. Like I don't know what you're doing. Like yeah. why are you buying a, yeah. a, a house in Kingston, Ontario, or Sault Ste. Marie, Sudbury, trying to force the numbers to work? Yeah, <laughs> why are you buying there? I'd rather be in Tampa, Florida. You know, I'd rather be in, or just around Houston, Texas. Have you ever heard of Houston, Texas? I'm sure everybody has. Yeah, has, has that. Has everybody heard of Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario? No, nobody has. <laughs> Why are you investing there? There's nothing there. Oh, but yeah. the numbers work there. Yeah, dude, nobody lives there, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah. nobody wants to be there. Got the nickel mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like, as long as the mine's there. Yeah. yeah right? So that's how yeah. I look at, and I've yeah. always looked at uh, real estate that way. Like strong GDP growth, population growth, job growth. Where are those going to be? Which is why I chose Kitchener. Luckily, I just lived in Kitchener, one of the best cities in Canada to invest in. Yeah. For those it's right on decade. that corridor too with a 401. Yeah. Like, so like, yeah, like okay, there's so many things. I already live in one of the best areas. Like, I'm just going to double down. Yeah. But, you know, if I'm doing deals out Canada, I'm looking at Miami, yeah. Tampa, Houston, you know, if yeah, and those dare, are, I those go are to Memphis, areas. Tennessee and buy those houses, you know, like so stuff that's like that. a less, that's a more economic yeah, depressed area, for sure. right? But I mean, the benefit of that area, and I know people who are investing in that in Memphis, yeah. is you can buy houses oh, under stupid. 100 grand. Under 100 grand, they cash for like 400 bucks, 600 bucks for a single family house. But that's pretty good. Crackheads everywhere, you know, crimes. Yeah, everywhere, yeah. But... Weren't you saying that people will lock up their air conditioning units? Yeah, like I, have, yeah. I have a whole team built in Memphis. I was going to I was going to go with partners um, before we started this. So I have realtors, property managers, the whole team's ready to go. Yeah. But yeah, but they were like, yeah, when you buy a house or a rental property and they move out, we're going to come over and take the AC off <laughs> and take it back to the shop. And when the tenant, the new tenant moves in, we'll go back and install it again. I was like, are you yeah. serious? Are people, is crime that bad? They're going to go steal the copper. And they're like, yeah, dude. They're yeah. gonna steal everything. It's like I don't want to go there. That's crazy. If, <laughs> it's crazy. Crazy if it's electrified that they yeah. do that. Yeah, because they will get a good shock. Right. That's two. That's yeah. two twenty. Right. That's like, crazy. It, it could kill them. Yeah. Like so. Actually, one of the things we did at our old builds when I was building townhouses is uh, the electrician. I'm like, what do we do to stop this? Because they'd come, the crackheads. Yeah. Would come and snip our wires. So they'd just be pigtailed off outside oh, the dude. wall. And before we connected them, they'd snip the wire. So we had to pull the whole thing out and rerun the wire because oh. you can't junction it. Yeah. Um, so he's like, well, what we need to do is get those air conditioners on there and electrify them. Yeah. And no one's sniffing anything. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah tell them who they are. I so guess. That's crazy. They probably just pull the shutoffs. If they, yeah. if they have it in code there, they got to have the shutoff. They just pull yeah. it out. But I guess back then we weren't doing that because yeah, that's we crazy. did not have shutoffs. So interesting. Um, yeah. But so Memphis was was one where you could see the numbers making sense. So give me an idea. Numbers make sense for sure, hundred percent. Okay. Well, what would they have looked like? Would you get twelve hundred in rents on something you? Yeah. So like a single family house, yeah, we thirteen hundred to fifteen hundred, give or take, depending where you are in the mm -hmm. neighborhoods. Northeast is the best spot. If if I did buy in Memphis, it would be there. It's less crime filled. Um, yeah. Houses are one hundred and forty thousand. Rent is fifteen, sixteen, seventeen hundred. So yeah. like one percent. So you're getting easily. your one percent rule. Yeah. The thing that I've noticed in, in Florida with the uh, the high taxes, with the HOAs, and with the flood insurance, yeah, uh, one percent rule is not enough. Yeah, be like one and a half too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got You got to be like. So yeah. so when we're looking at deals, we're putting that case together for yeah. Airbnb. Like, how can we for optimize sure. the income? I mean, if we can find big like bedroom houses, like with like eight bedrooms, pad split. You oh can, god, yeah. You can actually like rent out their rooms. Yeah, and stuff. that'd be sweet. Yeah, they have. There's so many ways you can do it, but it, get creative, right? Like that's the big thing. But you can still do like regular run of the mill in, in oh, Memphis. Sure. You're saying probably in Houston too, but again, yeah. in Houston you get into really high property tax. Yes, probably not as bad on the insurance side. Not as bad, especially like mm -hmm. from what I've done the research. I have a whole team built there too. You, you don't want to go in Houston. That's just not good. It's like Memphis part two, yeah. but it's the suburbs around. It's the Kitchener yeah. Waterloo's of Houston, you know, think yeah. of Houston as Toronto, Kitchener, Waterloo. So it's like the suburb 20 minutes outside of Houston. That's mm -hmm. where you want to invest. It's, it's Pleasantville, yeah. nice curbs and sidewalks and houses. That's yeah. where you want to be. So those houses, yeah, are like 180,000. The rent is 1,800, 2,000. 
So again, one percent rule, and it's just getting the 1% boring. Yeah. yeah, and even with the high high uh, property taxes, it can still work. It's still cash flows. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And that's based on what would you assume? Like if if it's a Canadian coming in, they're getting like a nine ten percent mortgage. Yeah, it'll be around. Yeah, right now probably nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that's a little bit of an ouch. So yeah. those are going to be very small yeah. cash flow at that. It'll point. be low. It's it's, it's yeah. the same as Kitchener. You're cash flowing a hundred bucks, hundred twenty bucks. Yeah. Same thing. You're gonna well, you, what you would have done in Kitchener like four years ago, five years ago. Right. But uh, it's just boring. It's simple. It's quality. So, good quality tenant. Yeah. So if you want boring, that's the place to go. What was your thought with that? Because I know obviously you have a big you know database of people. You have like a lot yeah. of investors. Were you thinking that they would just come in? You do like partnerships and. And yeah. uh, just be long term hold, slow, slow kind yeah. of place. That's what we were doing yeah. two, three years ago. I started building that list. Everybody was yeah. like, Yeah, let's do it. I'm going to partner with you, Matt. And then obviously, recession happened, whatever. Interest rates yeah. went up. I and mean, people just got scared. Canadians yeah. specifically got scared. Americans still think it's party time, baby. But Canadians just, got scared. Yeah, they still were more conservative here. Everybody thought real estate wasn't cool anymore. So I was like, all right, well. Yeah, I wonder if bigger pockets is like if their if their consumption of content is down. I'm sure it is. Yeah, I'm sure it is but down, not but like, not like not this. Like it's here. not like this. Even just with what we're dealing with, talking yeah. to the realtors, there's buyers buying land, you know, yeah. interested in our lots. It's not the like it is. Always moving. Yes. Like it's always moving. I was just looking up Cape Coral yeah. because people are sending me these. Yeah. I had like five. Me too. People are sending people me those like crazy too. Sending yep. me the video of Cape Coral's in a crisis. I'm like, that's a bit hyperbolic mm-hmm. because if you're listed like below market or slightly below market, It'll you're going to still move. Yeah, <laughs> It's the ones that are listed high, but they have like uh, over 200 days of inventory. Yeah, it's crazy. It's, yeah, they're selling like 700 in a month. There's 5,700 listed. Yeah. That's not, a, I mean, I wouldn't want to be owning for sure houses there. I still have one lot left there, which is super annoying, but uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I might just uh, just cut whatever, drop, drop the price on it, just get a move. Yeah. Um, but I even offered to take seller financing on it to just like gotcha. just get actually somebody. more as an experiment because I wanted to like apply that to what we're doing. Yeah. So I just figured, okay, well, I'll do this one. I'll figure out all the kinks, like how to administer, like, cause I wanted to service the loan, yeah. send out proper mortgage statements and everything. And the companies down there will do that for yeah. a fee. So I just wanted to try that all out so we could confidently go in and yeah. say, we're going to do this. But I think I was overthinking that. We'll just do it anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Whatever, you know, like I think it's actually an annoyance to have a, a little $30,000 mortgage paying me because <laughs> yeah. like just the upkeep on that, the filings, the tracking, the amortization, yeah. pay down of interest versus, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I will obviously let the bookkeeper do all of that. But for 300 bucks payment every month or whatever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, if it gets it sold, whatever, yeah. uh, I don't mind it because I know of many guys who they'll just pick up these small parcels of land and they'll just list them for sale, hold back the financing. Yeah. And they'll get somebody. They'll put it, they'll list it themselves. They'll put it up on Facebook and they'll say, you know, come put five, ten thousand dollars down. Yeah. And you could sell it for double what you paid anyway. Right. Yeah. So you take back a monster mortgage. Yeah. And then the numbers make sense. Like so yeah. it, it pays. Yeah, yeah, that's the only thing, right? Like we'd still have investors in if we do that. So yeah. you know, I know we're th- I'm just thinking out loud right now because every deal, I think we're always both looking at it as like, how many different ways can we monetize yeah. this? What can we do with that? For sure. And, you know, there's way, way more than one way to win, right? Yeah. Do we say anything we shouldn't hear? <laughs> well, the one thing I will say as well is like, even when we, when I bought uh, our house in Naples in the height of the height, like it wasn't like Canada here where you yeah. houses sold in six hours of being on the market. Like even then in the height, yeah. I was able to take my time. We put it, we, we bought the house. We had a 30 day home inspection, financing condition, insurance condition, 30 days. Wow. And even the realtor said like, yeah, let's do it 30 days. And I was like, are you nuts? It's not seven. Like, like Canada. He's yeah. like, no, 30 days. No, they don't do it that quick. I was like, there. what? Yeah. And anyway, we got it. anyway. So like, and obviously now the market's much slower in both countries, but yeah, America is like you said, always moving, but it never got as crazy as Canada did. And probably never will. Cause what we saw in Canada was like, We'll never see that again. In our market. Life, like think. I'm sure you could go to like, like New York City yeah, or something yeah, yeah. and see crazy numbers there yeah, too. Right downtown Manhattan yeah, or something like yeah. that. But but I don't re- think in general yeah. they were as Your crazy. Everyday neighborhood. Certainly not as crazy in like yeah. Southwest Florida. Yeah, yeah. Like they just regained their 2006 high in like 2021. Yeah, that's crazy. And then they kept going up, and then obviously they came down. They probably corrected like 20. Yeah. percent And now it's probably corrected further. Yeah. Uh. So yeah, I, they felt the pain. I felt the pain. I had stuff like I thought we were going to sell it like. 600 we ended up selling closer to five yeah on stuff like that's how much it changed while i was building oh yeah so that's i mean nuts. it was still fine i still made money but um, yeah 
it's like it was one of those type of things where I'm like, whoa, I got away with one there. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Not doing that again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but then on the positive side, you know, that was kind of I want to say once in a lifetime thing, but it was a major thing. We don't see that type of uh, yeah. Well, we haven't seen that types of hike cycle in like 40 years that quickly, that aggressive. Yeah, well, Probably, there is no precedent. We might not it. again ever in our yeah. lifetime see a hike cycle like that. So that is like kind of once in a lifetime scenario that might not happen again. Yeah, a, a real estate market correcting like hike, that quickly hikes to the uh, interest rate and qu a, yeah. a quick market correction. Yep. I'm talking 18 months. It wasn't that quick, but you know, it feels quick. It does. But it does feel quick. And normally, yeah, like, I remember, doesn't do that normally. It's you know. Yeah, I remember making a video about that. Like, there's no precedent for this interest rate change, and that's true. There isn't, but. We only have like a really, really 40 good years of yeah. fiat, 50 good years of true, fiat true. currency. Off the gold standard. Yeah, yeah off exactly. the gold standard, like absolute money manipulation, yeah. uh, you know, kind of new era here. I mean, I'm sure if you go back in the history books, but what, you know, history is written by the victors. So yeah, <laughs> will you get accurate information? <laughs> you could probably find uh, past examples of yeah. it too. Um, but yeah, it's tough. There, there's not a lot of sample size yeah. is, is really the challenge to know what's coming from here this is which is why for me again why we go back we got to make money on the buy yeah and then the other thing on as a long-term investor i'm looking how can i structure this deal where between cash flow and principal pay down i'm winning enough that i don't care what happens to the exactly value. that's the biggest thing is just yeah. sleep at night kind yeah. of thing yeah like when we're, we're running our our values like super low appreciation yeah. or, or almost none at all yeah exactly and if the deal works there now you know you got a deal yeah, yeah exactly that's the big thing yeah because who knows? Like we might, we might not go up. It might stagnate for a while. Might, yeah. I feel like Canada's more likely to have that, but then again, yeah. Canada dropped interest rates first. Yeah, it, there's just too many factors. Yeah, I think Canada's more likely to bounce back quicker and harder. But we're not in yeah. Canada anymore, so like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't care so much anymore. But yeah, for sure. All right, Matt. Where do people find you? Follow you? And YouTube. Type in the Fruitful Investor or go to Instagram, Matt Piche. Matt I'm on Piche. both the both of those the most. Yeah. All right. And uh, anything you wished I'd asked you about or we talked about that we haven't? I think we covered everything. It was a part mastermind of our business here. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I figured some people would actually like yeah. that, you know, like just getting into like the things that we deal with on a daily, like what we're, we're thinking about. Because yeah. like, we obviously have challenges. Matt and I are both working very hard right now and balancing a lot of things. Yeah. But we're building a business. So exactly. like... It's not always going to be like that. It's hopefully. like a startup. So I've joked about the whole time. It's, it's we're starting a startup hundred percent. Yeah. Which is super. It definitely feels like it. <laughs> super cool. Yeah. Move, move yeah. fast, break things. Yeah. But the nice thing is, is this startup, we could actually be profitable in the first year. Whereas yes. so many others. Some tech can't. company doing nothing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Zombie yeah. tech company. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Cool, Matt. Well, thanks for driving. Yeah. Thanks for having me on.